it's time for another fountain pen shootout. And today I thought what I would have a look at would be two classic pens. The classic pens LM1 and the classic pens LM5. And I kind of wanted to take this as an opportunity to talk a little bit about pens and pen pricing too, because one of these is pretty much three times as expensive as the other pen, and one could ask why? Because they look rather similar. They're not similar, well I mean they're similar, but they're not the same, and there definitely are some differences between the two. So I'm going to tilt the camera down so you can really see the pens, because otherwise 50 people will point out that you only see my face and that it's terrible and all horrible and I don't know how to do videos. So I will do that, and then when all the bitching is done, we can look at the pens, right? And I can talk you through it, and we shall see what I have to say. Okay, so let's talk about these pens. So what we have here on top is the Classic Pens LM1, and we have the Classic Pens LB5, and then we have just the Lamy Safari as a size comparison. Now let me zoom in just a little bit more. So I can show you the pens a little bit more up close, because I know people will want that. What can I tell you about these pens? Well, both of these pens I have bought pre-owned. Actually, I bought one, and I received one as a gift from Aziza, which is this one. That is a little bit of an issue, because I don't actually know 100% certainly what she has paid for this, but I'll get to that, okay? So what about these? I'm going to remove the Safari. What about these two pens? Well, they are made by a company called Classic Pens, owned by Andreas Lambrou. Andy Lambrou uh, also has uh, written some excellent, excellent books on fountain pens. And this is a company that focuses on very high-end, limited edition pens. And so that, that's pretty much it. Now, if you're more interested, I don't really want to talk a whole lot about the company. You can look that up for yourself. But as to these pens, they are made out of diffusion bonded acrylic, which is supposed to be a sort of bulletproof acrylic and they came in different colors. Now, the color that appealed most to me was this red, which in the uh, LM1 is called Flame Red, and in the LB5 was called uh, Cayenne, K-A-E-N, okay? As to the different pens, this model, as I understand, is a, a classic pens design. So this, the LM1 is designed entirely by classic pens. The LB5 is basically a Sailor King of Pen, but it's half a centimeter longer than a King of Pen. I have done a review where, uh, sorry, a fountain pen shootout where I compare the LB5 to a King of Pen. If you find that really interesting, you can look it up. So, they came in blue, they came in purple, brown, white, green, and um, red. And now I start to doubt about the blue. I thought there was a blue. Anyway, it, it doesn't really matter. You can, again, all the, all the stuff you can look up. I really want to talk about the pens and what makes them different, okay? So, one thing that is a big difference between the two is the number made, okay? So the LM1, uh, there were 500 of these, okay? And this happens to be number 311 out of 500. The LB5, was made in 50 and both of this that's of each color okay so there were 500 red ones 500 green ones etc and lb5 there was only 50 out of each color now you see that this actually has sailor on here because these were made by sailor i'm not 100 percent sure who made the lm ones so the first difference lies in how limited the pens are 50 is a lot less than 500 now let's talk about the price. I am not sure what the LM1 cost when it was launched. I do know that I paid 500 US for it. Okay, 500 US. I bought it from Sarge Minhas, the one-man pen show. And this, I think, is a nice pen. It's a nice size that works for most people. A little bigger, but not a huge oversized pen. So it's, in my mind, very comfortable. It has an 18 karat Bock nib, and I got it with an 18 karat stub nib, but unfortunately that stub nib is 3,000 kilometers away from me right now, so I can't show you that. And a very kind viewer 
sent me a broad nib, which I put on here, but that Salmon from the Toronto Pen Company ground into an excellent architect nib. And I know exactly what's going to happen. People are going to say, eh, but then you cannot compare them because that is not an factory nib. Yes, I know that is not an factory nib, but this is how it is, and this is what I have on here <clears throat> right now. So, an 18K number 6 Bach nib. Okay, with a rather nice, rather big feed, which I found is a little open and the pen does dry out a little bit. Okay, that is an LM1, $500. Then you have the LB5, more limited, but same material. Upon being launched, the LB5 cost 1500 US, so that makes it three times as expensive as an LM1. 1500 US for a an LB5 with a medium or a broad nib. There never was a fine nib. Or 1850 US for a cross point nib. What is a cross point nib? That is a nib unique to Sailor, invented by Mr. Nagahara, their resident nibmeister, and it basically is two nibs welded on top of each other, which creates a brush type effect. It's, you could say a giant architect ground, uh, architect grind nib, which works very well for Asian characters. Now I do not write Asian characters, but I do have the cross point on here. Again, this was bought basically in the aftermarket, right? This was pre-owned. So, again, this was a gift from Aziza. I'm not a hundred percent sure what she paid for it. What I can tell you is that I was looking on eBay to see what these currently go for. I found a prototype LB5, so that is not a regular LB5, but a prototype LB5 for 5,800 US. That is a little insane in my mind, but given the popularity of these, how few of them you find online, I would not be surprised if a normal price for these would be about 2,000 US right now, and right now being June 2019. I fear the price is only going to go up. They are very pretty, they are very attractive, and uh, people really want them. So there is that. Okay, so I've shown you the Bachner, but let's show you this up close for a bit. It has the Classic Pens logo on it. It also says uh, Classic, and then it says 18K750. Again, that's the architect. Of course, I will write with it, and then you have the LB5 with the very special uh, Nagahara cross point. As I said, two nibs welded on top of each other. And if I don't say this now, I'll get a million questions. No, these nibs are not really currently available. Okay, so don't ask me where you can get one because I don't know. Okay, the Mr. Nagahara passed away. Production of these ground to a halt and that's pretty much it. So either you look on eBay or you look somewhere else and you may or may not be able to find one. But I, I don't know. I can't I can't hook you up with one. Okay? The LB5, a bigger pen, is longer than the LM1 is. I'll show you the pens uncapped and I will do a writing sample. And I'll try to talk a little bit about my experience with both as we go. Okay, so they have them side by side. And as you can see, Pen-wise, one is not a whole lot bigger than the other is, right? The LM1 actually has a slightly longer section. The LB5 has a bigger nib though, 21 karat, sailor made, etc. Okay, let's, uh, whoops, let's use these. Now, the real question that we have to answer is, is that, let's say, thousand uh, dollars extra that you would pay for an LB5, maybe a little more by now, is that really worth it relative to the LM1? Well, that's a very subjective statement. What I can tell you, sorry, I'm going to have to move the camera a little bit here, because otherwise I can't reach around the tripod. Um, being an architect nib, you have to hold this in a slightly interesting fashion, so I wanted an architect too, because everybody had architects. An architect is a nib that is pretty much the reverse of an italic nib, so you get a fine downstroke and a broad side stroke. Okay? Now I'm going to write with this in cursive 
which I do because that's how I write, but that won't really show off the architect effect so much. That is why I just did this, okay? So a broad nib for sure, very smooth. Salmon did an exceptional job on this nib. And I love this pen. The reason I love the LM1 is that it's very manageable. It's not a huge oversized pen, but it's a very nice size. Big enough to be comfortable. And what I really love about these pens is the material. The material is stunning. This red is, is incredible. And especially when you, if you see it in real life, it has an enormous depth to it, which is very, very special. It's almost radiant. And that I really love. So the name Fire was definitely well chosen. It's a nice wet writer, but as I said, the feed is quite open and I have found these pens a little prone to drying out. I found that on the factory stub that came with it and I found that on the broad nib before it was ground into an architect. Now for some reason, right now this nib seems uh, like a fire hose, so I don't know if Salmon modified the feed. In any case, it doesn't really dry out so much anymore. So that's really cool. The ink here, Mont Blanc Corn Poppy, which is the only ink I put in these pens because it's a perfect match. Okay, so a lovely pen and this one sort of posts. Sort of. Not really. Sort of. Okay? Because otherwise people ask me that as well. Okay, then the LB5. As I said, also basically an architect that you can make really, really broad depending on how you angle it. Um, this I would say is the broadest you can write with this, which is an absolute joy. But by varying the angle a bit, you can also make this right. I know this is horrid handwriting people, I know that, okay? Don't have to point it out. You can also make it right much thinner, a much finer line. Okay, so what's the bottom line? Why would you buy any of these pens? Well, you're talking about a luxury segment and pretty much everyone I have shown these pens over the years says, oh I want one of these too. I know. And that's because the material is so vibrant and so stunning. The most affordable way to do it is for sure to buy an L LM LM1. I nearly got confused there myself. Because these are relatively affordable, but even relatively affordable means 500 bucks. Right? They're not cheap pens. LB5, good luck finding one. It's very, very difficult. And I think that's because most people who buy these hold on to them because they love them. It's a very nice pen, and that extra half centimeter doesn't sound like a lot, but that has kind of perfected the King of Pen for me. Of course, a super wide nib, but that is the cross point. That's the whole idea. If you want a normal writing experience, you could simply buy a King of Pen section with a medium or a broad nib and flip them out because they will fit. The sections are completely interchangeable. I have tried that. And you can see the section is also not the red material, which is kind of a shame. If only it would be, because that would be amazing. Are they worth it? To me, yes. These are two pens that I love. I love using them. I love playing with them. I love carrying them. Uh, I think they are stunning, stellar objects. And for me, both of these are completely worth it. Your mileage, of course, may vary. And the main point for me in doing this video was kind of to show off the, the, the differences uh, between the pens. Both are stunning pieces and both are pens that I really, really love. So. Let me stop rambling. I hope this was useful, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.